Hey gang, joining me on the show today is my very, very good friend and one of the brightest legal minds in our industry here. If you don't know David Katz, David Katz is the shareholder at Wiseman, Zucker, Ooster, and Katz PC. David, welcome to the show, buddy. James, thanks so much for having me and great to see you again. You too, buddy. It's, it's really great to see you. So you brought this story to my attention, right? Without you sharing this on LinkedIn uh, last week, I probably would have missed it because it wasn't as big of a deal, but I really do think there's an underlying theme here. So for those who don't know or missed the episode, um, on July 24th, the FTC published a paper essentially warning businesses that hashing is misleading consumers. David, what does that really mean? Yeah, no. So the, the FTC uses their blog to communicate to the public generally their positions um, and the way that they're thinking about some of the topics that they're looking closely at. And for this topic in particular, you know, their concern is that companies may be misrepresenting or misleading consumers about anonymized data. And they called out specifically the practice of hashing, which really takes an identifiable uh, variable and an identifier like an email address, uh, an IP address, something that's specific to an individual and hashes it into a mathematical formula that the business can use to make reference to that but that is not that information specifically in text. And the FTC was saying, wait a minute, that really doesn't make it anonymous and it doesn't prevent somebody else on the back end for, from undoing that hash and to being able to see the data. And they made reference to a number of cases where companies had done just that, had represented on the one hand that it was anonymized, but in reality it could have been undone on the back end by the recipients of the data. And that's specifically what they were pointing out. So now that they've pointed that out as a practitioner, what what's what's and 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 how do i go to legal what what's is there you know yeah. do you think there's any kind of relook at this and, and what would you suggest we do as practitioners yeah i mean i think it illustrates and illuminates an age old problem that has existed for a very long time and that is the challenge that a ciso has in trying to explain and communicate the technology and even the limits of the technology or the complexities of the technology to lawyers and lawyers should not be relying solely on CISOs to provide the overall explanation and making them responsible for communicating sort of outside of the technical environment, uh, the technology. It's really the responsibility of the lawyers to work with the CISOs to make sure they really understand it and to make sure that if there's a way that it's being communicated publicly, that it's accurate, that it's not misleading. And the CISOs should be having those conversations and you know, maybe in some cases, um, really getting some kind of assurances from the legal counsel inside, like, hey, do you really understand this? Have we been clear in how this technology works? And, and maybe we need to come so, to some sort of an agreement that I've provided you everything you need to know to communicate about this technology. That's that's good practice, both for the lawyer and it's good practice for the CISO. Yeah, this seems to be kind of an action setup, right? So we know that for, for, for a lot of our audience members, I've talked about this uh, a lot on the show. The SEC action against Tim Brown, the, the CISO at SolarWinds and SolarWinds in regards to kind of the misrepresentation on their website, uh, you know, and, and that's really now what's kind of going forward in the action by the SEC, according to the latest ruling by a federal judge. This seems to be very kind of the FTC looking at the SEC action against SolarWinds and going, they're going after SolarWinds and Tim Brown for essentially the trust page, which talks about hashing your data, right? kind of anonymizing right. your data. Do right. you think the FTC is inspired by that? Yeah, I mean, I think they're generally wanting to make sure that, that um, you know, that the technology is is not being used to sort of obfuscate sort of the bigger issues around uh, an anonymity and that you can't hide behind the technology and say, well, we think it does this when in actuality it doesn't. And I think, you know, to your point, there's a lot of confusion that sometimes comes out in the way things are described or how they're, they're um, you know, how they're explained on a web page. And that's why a CISO really needs to be clear and careful. And the lawyers bear a lot of responsibility to making sure they understand and making sure they're communicating it correctly. So there's there's uh, opportunities on both sides. But, you know, the last place the CISO wants to see themselves is sort of hung out to dry over some kind of miscommunication or really misunderstanding by the legal team or the executive team. It could get your, you know, you could get yourself in this kind of situation where it's being scrutinized and, and really looked at closely. Yeah, absolutely. And you're absolutely right, David. I think if you're a CISO today, uh, knowing this, you want to definitely speak to your inside counsel, but 
uh, as a general recommendation, counsel does not represent you, represents the company. Right. And so you might want to have your own counsel. Just saying, yeah. you might yeah. you might want to spend you know a thousand or two thousand dollars and go sit with a, an external counsel and say, what do I make of this? How do I make sure I cover my own tail um, within the company uh, so that I don't you know potentially become a target of illegal action by the FTC? Yeah, I mean even to that point, right? I mean the way that you communicate and maybe it's good to have your own memo. This is what I said. This is what I explained yep. and have that in, you know, in your file. Have that there for you to reference. Yeah. Right, David, right. thanks so much for coming on the show. I really appreciate it, folks. David Katz, shareholder at Wiseman, Zucker, Ooster, and Katz joining us here. You can find out more about David in the show notes. David, thanks for coming in. Have a great rest of your day, buddy. Thanks so Thank much, you. James. Thank you for having me.